Hi guys, we will start in a couple of minutes, waiting for some more people to join. Thanks for joining. Can you see my screen? If you can uh, type an answer. Okay, so we will wait for a couple of more minutes and then we will get started. So I'm sharing my screen. So there's a PPT up there that says technical writing fundamentals. And there's my name below that. And uh, we will get started in a couple of minutes. Let's wait for just two more minutes and then we should get started. Thank you. 
Okay, guys, uh, I think we should get started. So this is me. I hope you can see my video as well. So this is one our presentation uh, that we will uh, go through. And I'm going to talk about technical writing fundamentals. So if you are already a technical write, write, writer by profession, then of course, these things might kind of help you refresh what you already know. And the people who are uh, starting their career in technical writing, uh, or in content development or technical content development that these are the things that might be helpful for you that might these things might get you uh, give you some directions so uh, i'll quickly go to my presentation and uh, let's get started uh, okay so about me uh, my name is yogesh sharma and i am the founder of uh, a small company based out of noida uh, india this is in northern part of India. It's very close to the capital city of India, which is Delhi. So uh, what we do, we provide content development services to a lot of clients, technical content development services. Uh, and we are a team of writers who work on different types of projects, soft software projects, hardware projects, and uh, in financial domain, medical domain. So multiple, related, multiple content development things that we do as a team. So I have been a technical writer myself. I have worked for uh, around 24 years as a technical writer. And then one day I decided to start my own venture. So this is uh, what it is. Uh, it's called Mindwick. So you have already visited my website probably uh, from where you have uh, registered for the uh, this webinar. So here's my social media handle. Uh, if you want at the end of the session, if you think you really like the presentation, then maybe you can uh, you know, give me a like. Everyone likes the likes nowadays, uh, so I'm hungry for likes as well. So if you can like and uh, follow and subscribe, uh, whatever the options that you get in these social media channels, then of course I would love to get those things. Okay, so we'll get started. So let's uh, start with simple market research statistics. Uh, so these are some statistics that uh, so that there are these different. Uh, you know, companies, Gartner, MetaGrow, Forrester Research, Carnegie Mellon. So these are research companies. They keep on researching on different, uh, you know, different things from the market. And a lot of companies go to them and purchase this data to make business decisions. So there are some high level decisions, high level, uh, you know, details that I've got from their websites. And this is about that uh, around two third of the world's projects fail or they're not properly executed because of pro improper or in you know miscommunication so i'm going to talk about why i'm talking about all these things as well so i'm going to talk about in the next slides as well see technical writing is what technical writing is a communication we communicate about a technology or a software or a hardware or some other service to the end user so our responsibility is not just writing. So we are writing because we want to communicate something, right? So this is a very important thing. And you know, just don't take it very lightly that my role in this company is uh, very little. I am just a writer. No, you are a writer. That means you. There is a lot of responsibility on your shoulders, and you are communicating the ideas about this application, how the software functions, how this hardware functions to. The customers of that company and you might be impacting the lives of probably the millions of the people across across the globe so keeping that in mind let's move forward to our next slide so let's talk about what is technical writing technical writing it's a form of communication as i just said we're going to talk about applications of technical writing we're going to talk about uh, what is the role of a technical writer? We are going to talk about the skills required to become a good technical writer. And I'm, I'm also going to talk about what is not technical writing. So technical writing is basically uh, communication of ideas. Let's say there's a company that makes a software and the software is sold to the market. There are customers of that particular software of, uh, that purchase. Now, if the the software nowadays there are different the softwares of different complexity if i talk about my phone which i have in hand right now now this also this is a this is a hardware and this is this has got a lot of software inside 
uh, this particular uh, phone as well we call them apps now these apps are self intuitive and nowadays we don't get to see a lot of documentation about uh, uh, our hardware that we get in hand let's say let this and this is the calculator i have a calculator in front of me as well i have an air condition in this room i have a, a monitor i have a, a keyboard and a mouse i have wireless mouse so these are like very simple products we simply uh, just plug and play so there is no documentation required for these things because now people have become so smart after using technologies for so long now but there are companies that make uh, different types of uh, software and hardware uh, which are complex and which may be just uh, not easy for anyone to just kind of wade their way through that so for that there is a, a requirement of a writer who communicates how that software or hardware functions so that the person who is going to use it can seamlessly use that thing so technical writing it's a form of communication we are communicating about the usage of one product to the end users or the uh, you know buyers of that particular application or a hardware or a software so that is and, and technical writing is everywhere technical writing is in technology field it's in hardware field i was working with a company that was making uh, drones i was working with a company that was making uh, you know some uh, wearables uh, for the eyes and then i was working for a company which was making a uh, weld cleaning machine i was working with a company which had uh, boards uh, that go inside your computers and servers i was working with a company that made software for these boards so everywhere now technical writing is everywhere especially uh, you know anything which is complex in medical domain now there are so many medical instruments there are medical practices that have to communicate it with the doctors or the technicians who are using those technologies so that is where technical writing comes into picture let's talk about the role of a technical writer the role of a technical writer as i just mentioned maybe this is a repetition uh, it's about uh, the role of a technical writer is to communicate to make the lives of the users of that product easy they should not come back to the company and they should not be asking questions that i'm getting stuck with this particular feature i'm not able to use this product can you train me so a technical manuals that we produce as technical writers must be of good quality so that by reading that content the audience should be able to understand uh, how to use that product right skills required to become a good technical writer there's a pretty decent basic answer for that one is good uh, writing skills so if you are producing technical documentation in english language your english should be good by good what i mean is that your grammar should be good no no punctuation mistake you should be able to communicate your ideas through this english language it should it it it, it need not be very uh, big words complex words those are not required i'm going to talk about why those are not required in my upcoming slides and what is not technical writing technical writing some i've seen there are uh, a lot of companies who hire writers and these writers are just dependent on the engineers to give them the content so the engineers are writing the content and the technical writers are just kind of copy pasting those and then making them a little uh, beautiful content and maybe doing them some kinds of copy edit see in my opinion that is what technical writing is not about technical writing is that there is a product in front of you and now you know excel you have those excellent writing skills so you need to be the you need to act as the first the user of that product understand that product play around with that product and then write the content from scratch if it's not available if there is some content which is already available maybe you can leverage that content but that is uh, always not available so you as a technical writer you have to become the first the user understand the uh, product from the user perspective and then write it and think from the user perspective what are the things that the user will do with this particular product what is the first thing that this user will do what is the second thing what is the third thing and then you write the content in a particular order right so quickly moving on to the next slide uh, so why should you care about writing style so let's talk about technical writing so technical writing is different from other writing now 
see content writing you might have heard about content writing it's a big umbrella under that there are so many different things that come so many different styles of writing you are writing blogs you are writing travel blogs you are writing blogs for the food website you are writing blogs for uh, beauty websites uh, healthcare so there are di different domains so all that is also on content now you might have heard about instructional designing if you are not aware then you might have seen a lot of internet technology courses that you might have taken so there are uh, specialized writers or instructional designers who design those courses and which are available via internet so they create those e-learning content then we have this technical writing where every uh, uh, document that we produce is a custom document usually for a custom product for a custom or a different uh, unique customer so every time there might be the the life of a content writers very uh, it's never boring every time you are going to learn new technologies new products every time you're going to write something new about a new technology or a new project that never existed so technical documentation is not fiction it has to be to the point you cannot beat around the bush you cannot create the you know uh, theories and uh, stories you cannot create you have to simply to the point communicate the idea users do not like like to be overloaded with information usually we end up we think that user might not understand all these things so we uh, try to give a lot of content so it has to be brief to the point easy to read a uh, language right and uh, see technical writing is not about showing off our english writing skills it's about helping the user use the product so we always have to communicate in in such a way that we are able to help the end user make sense of things and able to use the product instead of giving so much information that, that the user might not need nowadays i'll give example when we uh, we are stuck with something we simply search google right or any other search engine we type our question we get answers and when we get a you know huge page uh, written information we look for that particular sentence that is going to help us so i'm not bothered about i, I you know I, i'm not looking for the writing skills of the writer I'm not looking for the how beautiful that content is written i'm looking for a help i'm looking for a solution for a problem that i'm currently experiencing right so i'm looking for something which is like i want quick nowadays everyone wants everything quick in few seconds so if you are able to do that then you are doing a good job as a technical writer right so even if so writers the readers are looking for one word answers maybe one sentence answer and they don't want to read all your content right so the technical information if it is uh, explained in very easy to understand language that is what people are looking for that is what our jobs as technical writers is so we are going to talk about a lot of things but i'm quickly going to touch about these four four things i'm not i'm not here to teach uh, english language i'm going to talk about some things about that we as writers so these are the very common mistakes that we end up making so i'm going to quickly touch these points punctuations so we make a lot of uh, mistakes in punctuations so punctuations uh, you know i'm going i'm not going to read this uh, slide by uh, sentence by sentence uh, maybe you can just google uh, and take some exercise online on punctuations and if you are making some mistakes in punctuations then maybe you should correct those things pretty very important the very common mistake is between uh, you are and you are you know your and your and its without apostrophe and its without apostrophe we keep on getting confused in those things contractions we put uh, apostrophe at a wrong place so if you can just google and so there are so many websites that teach english so if you want to learn about the correct punctuations go on those uh, websites and uh, you know take up some exercises and get your punctuations correct next is uh, uh, technical writing as i told you this is uh, a to the point straightforward instead of uh, you know writing passive sentences you need to write you must write active sentences for example you know, these are not very technical things if you look at these sentences at dinner 10 berries were eaten by harry once upon a time people used to speak this kind of language in olden times but nowadays harry ate 10 berries at dinner so we have to be to the uh, to the point active voice use active voice don't use passive voice right so i'm not going to 
cover all these examples. Again, I'm going to suggest that uh, uh, there are a lot of exercises on Google. Uh, there's so many websites that teach you uh, active versus passive. You can just take up those exercises and uh, you'll learn a lot of uh, active and passive voice. Okay, words. So when we start writing, we are always, uh, uh, you know, influenced by uh, bigger, complex words. Technical writing is not complex. Technical writing is very simple language that we have to write. So don't use, never use complex words. Why I'm saying this? Because when we write our content, just imagine that your content that you're writing is going to land in the countries where English is not their first language. If if you're writing, you may be good in English. You might have gone to great English school, studied great English till your uh, graduation or post-graduation level. But uh, there are countries where English is not spoken widely and people might understand a little bit broken English, but they might not be as good as you are. So what uh, is expected that you use simple words? I'm going to give some examples as well. So uh, let's say your content is going to China, your content is going to Korea, Japan, Philippines, uh, European countries. Most of the European countries, they don't speak English. Uh, South American countries and uh, you know, Arab Arabian countries. So all these countries, the English is not their first language. It is maybe that comes down the line. So we need to write simple words, choose the simplest words possible. Don't pick big complex words because that is going to uh, give them a lot of a lot of problems. See, again, coming back to what I just said earlier, as technical writers, our job is to make the lives of our readers easy, not complex. If we try to add complex words, again, it's going to make their life complex help them instead of you know asking them to okay i have written this beautiful piece of uh, you know paragraph it has got complex words now go and look for a dictionary and start you know uh, looking for the meanings of these complex words no that is not the idea use simple sentences so that even if a layman if he knows a little bit simple english he should be able to make sense of things and he should be able to perform uh, operations on whatever the product that he has purchased Next, okay, so this, these are some examples. Uh, again, I googled for these things, and now if you look at on the right hand side, there are so many simpler words, and on the left hand side, we have complex words. So instead of using those complex words on the in the, in the left column, you should use the words uh, in the right column. These, if you look, these right ones, and they are same meaning. The words have the same meaning, and these are simple instead of the words in the left column okay quickly moving on to sentences now this is like this how this is the building blocks words then sentences long and complex sentences are not recommended in technical writing technical documents use short words don't use you know words which are like 30 40 50 uh, you don't use sentences that are so huge maximum recommendation is 15 to 20 is readable just read it to yourself when you've written a piece of content read it to yourself and if you can read the sentence without becoming breathless then probably that, that is good but general industry standard is that if you're writing technical content if you are not using if you're not writing for fiction uh, then maybe 15 to 20 words is good enough don't use a lot of parentheses brackets inside brackets inside brackets that is not recommended that is good in uh, mathematics but not in not in english then we come to paragraphs. Now, what are paragraphs? Paragraphs are not just a random collection of sentences. Paragraph is like it, this, where a paragraph is those a collection of those sentences that are interconnected and they are trying to project one idea. It should not be that one paragraph is combination of so many ideas and the person who's reading the paragraph is kind of uh, getting confused. Try to uh, reduce the paragraph to half a page. Structure your paragraph. It should not be just I'll, I have some beautiful sentences, I'll just dump them, make a paragraph and just write it in my uh, uh, document. No, it should be in, in a particular order. The transition should be smooth, it should not. So you should read it to yourself and you will kind of uh, understand that, yeah, this is where I'm making a mistake. So I always recommend uh, for all, all the people I uh, teach technical writing, I tell them when, you, when you're writing something, read it to yourself as well. So if you are able to read comfortably, then probably the flow is uh, is good. 
So here are some examples. Okay, now this is a, a little exercise. Uh, maybe you can uh, kind of see what I'm saying here. So there is a sentence, there's a paragraph. Uh, it, it's in red color. I'll just tell you why this is in red. This is red because there are some mistakes in this. So there are so many things. There are different ideas. I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to come to quickly the next step. So there are multiple ideas that uh, are there in this one particular paragraph. So let's quickly see what I'm trying to say. So this paragraph can be broken into smaller sentences or even smaller paragraphs. So if you look at there are multiple things as discussed in this, the first part is uh, eating in the coffee office cafeteria is a pleasant experience. The food is excellent. So first, first, first part of this, this paragraph is talking about the food. The second part is talking about the environment. And the third part is about their, the people. So I think in, in my so this green is like green signal that this is a much better way to break the content in uh, readable. Uh, you know, it's, it's looking more pleasing to the eyes as well. Instead of clubbing all these sentences and making them one paragraph, if we can break down into uh, a paragraph which has just which is just talking about one idea uh okay what are lists very important lists are again uh, they help in uh, retaining the attention of the audience instead of clubbing a lot of items in just one paragraph it is uh, you know it is recommend, recommended that you uh, create lists now there are two types of lists one is the bulleted list one is the numbered list if you are just listing some uh, items which may not be in any particular order then you can use a bulleted list but if you have a list that has to be executed. The actions have to be executed in one particular order. Then it has to be one, two, three, four. That one means first thing, second thing, third thing. Or it can be A, B, C, D, or it can be a Roman numbers. Uh, and then there are nested lists as well, which can be a combination of uh, multiple things. Let's say you have a numbered list. You have step one. Under step one, you have to perform two other steps. Then those can be uh, bullets, or those can be another alphabetical uh, alphanumeric list. So I'm going to show some exam show some examples of the list as well. So this is a sample. Okay, so this is the paragraph. Uh, I got the sentence from one of my engineers. He's written that the controller hardware includes this, this, this. Thing. So instead of this, if you can break it up, this thing in uh, in, in a list, this green one, uh, isn't this more pleasing to the eyes? Isn't it, isn't it more readable as compared to the first one? The content is same, hundred percent same. Same. The second part is, in my opinion, uh, more aesthetic, uh, more pleasing to the eyes. So that is what we need to look for. If we have this kind of thing, always create the lists. And then you have the numbered list. Uh, okay, so this is. Uh, a process to compile a U boot for this SDK. First, you do this, second, you do this, third, you do this, and finally, you do this. Instead of that, can I break it into this numbered list? It can be okay, number one, do this, number two, do this, number three, this, and finally, this is what it is. This is more readable. A person, if, if that person has got this thing presented, uh, printed, and this uh, he's just reading this uh, this list and performing some uh, checks on his particular product. And then he can, it's easy for him to just check and make sure that he has executed or completed this list and he's done with that particular uh, task. Okay, let's move on to style guide. And the style guide is, uh, it's, it's a guide that usually is recommended by companies uh, businesses where they talk about that our content that goes out to the market or to the customer uh, it should be written in a certain way so it is a guide which teaches you how to write for that particular organization or the company that you work for uh, i work for different companies they had some internal style guide which talked about okay this is how going to write about this particular application this is how you talk about a button this is how you talk about a uh, window these are the different icons on this window so this is what you write for this particular thing so it it, it actually um, as i was telling you earlier in one of the slides technical writing is not fiction writing so this is actually it helps to maintain or to bring consistency in the writing of all the different writers working in that particular company so let's say there's a company that has hired 10 writers who are working on 10 different applications or there might be 
uh, one writer or two writers or three writers who are working on one product which has multiple documents. So if every writer is writing in his or her own way, then all the con all the content will look different. So to avoid that, this style guide teaches people how to be consistent. Okay, if you have a sentence, it should be written in act active voice. If this is a scenario, this is how you write. So it establishes and enforces a style of uh, uh, communication. It brings a uniformity in the content that we write. Right. So there are different uh, industry uh, style guides which are available. You can you know purchase purchase these from uh, Amazon or other sites. So this is a Microsoft manual style. This is, comes from a Microsoft company. This is, I think, the fourth. The uh, fourth edition is the latest edition you can purchase. And then there are there is another called Chicago manual style. So if you're interested, you might find some uh, PDF somewhere also, ebooks also available. And you can download and just go through them and uh, read through them and you'll get an idea of, okay, how this is how I, uh, you know, the content is to be written for technical audience. So there, as I spoke, uh, as I spoke, that there are company-specific style guides, or there are standard style guides which are available in the market that you can purchase. Okay, let's quickly come to again the next step, which is uh, writing. So there's something called uh, KISS formula. Keep it short and simple. Uh, okay. So minimalist writing is an art of presenting concise, concise information to the audience without eliminating important information. So when you're writing something, let's say if you have written some content for uh, the audience, read it to yourself. You might find some words which are not required. You might find some sentences that might not be required that are not actually adding value to the end user. So instead of sending all the content to them and just leaving that with the customers or the readers to decide, decide on what they want to read or not, try to minimize the content that actually doesn't add value. So minimalist writing is what? It's like it's a blend of clarity and brevity. Content should be complete, but it should be brief, right? In, in this process, you should not, uh, you know, make the content incomplete or incorrect, technically incorrect. So make sure that when you're writing something, if you want to avoid some extra words, Make sure that is even after doing that, the technical should be technically correct as well. It should not change the meaning of the content, right? Provide only relevant information to the audience. Write the audience, write, write what the audience wants to know, not what you want to write. We get from, you know, get sucked into this kind of thing that, oh my God, I think this information might be helpful for the audience. Okay, I'll just give that also. I'll just give this also. And we end up bombarding the, info, the information on the customers or the readers mind which is not the right to as i told you earlier in one of the slides that people are looking for those one word answers those one sentence answers everyone is now so much technically sound that they probably have figured out a lot of things by themselves but they'll get stuck somewhere and then that they're going to pick up a manual and look for okay or maybe just they're going to google how to solve this problem that is when they will need most of your help and at that point of your, if you've written a page about a lot of theory and uh, uh, that kind of stuff, <laughs> they're not going to like it. They were looking for that little answer. So uh, always think from the user perspective. If, uh, if if the user is supposed to perform some steps in a uh, application, uh, what are the steps that user is going to perform to achieve or to perform that particular task? So from that perspective, identify those tasks and then write. So try to write task-based content if that if you're trying to present some information which is going to help them perform some kind of task. So uh, last sentence, minimalist writing style makes technical complex, complex technical information accurate, accessible, readable, and usable. Okay, let me get into some exercises. Now this is a sentence, minimalist writing is easy. Is a form of writing style that helps you make your complex technical information accurate, easily accessible, easy to read, and easy to use. Now, this has 26 words. Can I cut short into smaller uh, sentence? Maybe. Let me see if I can save some ink. Okay. Minimalist writing makes complex technical information accurate, accessible, readable, and usable. I have cut down into less than half. I just managed that in 11 words. The meaning still remains the same. 
most of it. Okay, now there are other things that providing single option to the reader. Uh, we get tempted that I think this task can be performed in so many different ways. I'm going to give all the examples, uh, all the different ways to the user. The user might be looking for that one particular solution. He might not look for, okay, he's not looking for the you know knowledge about how the different ways to do that to perform a certain task the user might be looking for a solution right so let's say the plugin can be uninstalled using an add remove programs in the control panel it can also be done by this thing it can also be you can also uninstall the plugin by running the uninstall script from the point so we are trying to give a give multiple options to our audience which may not be required he's looking for okay i need how to remove or uninstall this particular program just give him one option good enough and you can if you are really uh, you know that you know there is a you know you are you want to give the other other example then probably appendix is another way you can create an appendix and maybe you know, just difference to learn more ways to uninstall this program you can refer to the appendix where you have all the other additional information if he's interested he'll go there but at the at that point of time the particular the user wants to perform certain tasks give him one option so that he can perform his task quickly faster parallelism uh, again it's like your structure of a sentence it should be uh, uniform it should not have different tenses or uh, they are written in a different way. One is active, one other is passive. No, it should be in a, uh, you know, they should be in a, in a, in a uniform order. I'll give you some example. Okay, so in the engineering group, I perform the following tasks: managing group, review specifications, create schedules, mentor, mentoring engineers. Now, what's wrong? Nothing wrong. Technically, may not be, but grammatically, yes. These are not parallel sentences. Look at the first words. The formation of the first words in this list. Two are ing format other two are not ing format so we need to bring uniformity so in the engineering group i perform the following tasks manage review create mentor okay so this is how you bring parallelism so these are like this is the uniform structure she likes cooking dancing and to read okay now you might have got uh, how we can solve this problem she likes cooking dancing and reading all in same format right uniform or do she like or she likes to cook dance and read right so this is what we need to do in to become parallelism so if you are uh, making notes also uh, you know just write these titles parallelism and you'll uh, if you google on search uh, on the internet you're going to find thousands and thousands of examples on uh, what are the uh, different ways to learn about parallelism so you can get a lot of examples go to them read them and you'll be able to understand okay consistency all the terms uh, uh, should be consistent if you are let's say uh, using one term for one particular thing don't change the terminology for that particular product so for example i was writing one document and i got some raw content from one of the engineers he was talking about a card, controller card, controller and hardware. And I went to that person and I asked him that, what are these different four different things? They said all these four different things are same controller card only. So instead of confusing me, if you can write in just one word, he said, this is this looks impressive to write and explain in different words. I said, it's not impressive. It's actually confusing the end user. So if there is a, if you are in your, in your document, in your, in your content, if you're writing, different names for one product it's not going to help the users it's going to con confuse them don't do that consistent consistent voice if you're talking about in first person or second person or third person be consistent don't keep on changing from you know you to he she or they it's not recommended use active voice use correct verb tenses i'm not going to teach all these things here maybe you can just can make notes and these are the things that you should practice uh, there are lots of resources on internet. You can just Google and you'll be able to learn about uh, all these things, right? Check for changing tenses within your sentences. I've seen a lot of people, you know, somewhere they'll go, go to a past tense, somewhere they'll go to a future tense, and 
they're just going to jumble up. So just when you're writing, make sure the tenses that you're writing in your sentence, in your paragraphs, in your content are consistent, right? Okay, uh, maybe I'll just skip this. Uh, okay, maybe the last one, for example, the last sentence, he, we had eaten, which was a past perfect tense. So we had eaten lunch and then we talked. Now this is simple past tense. So the correct way to write is we ate lunch and then we talked. Both are the same uh, sentence, uh, the same tense now. Redundancy, again, it's a very important thing. Redundancy is that we end up using a lot of words which are not required. We do a lot of repetition. So I'm going to talk about some examples. So it's like, if all of us cooperate together, we will succeed. Um, if all of us cooperate, so that together word was not required. It was a general consensus of opinion that we must go to the movie. It was a general opinion that we must go to the movie. So there are a lot of repetitions of this word. Uh, there were three astronauts that went on each and every Apollo space mission to the moon. So this each and every is not required. There were three astronauts on every Apollo moon mission. So you see that, and this is also a way to minimize your content. Again, bringing that minimalist principle up here. The three friends had nothing in common with each other. This is the correct way to write. The three, the three friends had nothing in common. Okay, so there are some common confusions. Uh, you can Google these as well. Uh, we get confused between there, there, and there. Then, then, it's, it's, accept, accept. All these things, again, English mistakes that we end up making a lot. Even after studying English uh, for so many years, we still end up making this mistake. So just uh, take up these exercises on the internet and you will get a, a lot of resources which are, uh, you know, there to help you practice your English and get rid of all these problems that we face on a daily basis. This one, lose and lose, L O O S E and L O S E. Lose means how tight something isn't, and lose is a verb that you can lose a game or a sock. Okay. Redundant words, uh, I'll just give you some examples. Again, use internet and you'll find thousands of similar examples. Come to a conclusion, conclude, despite the fact that the place is with although, due to the fact that because fewer in number, just use the word fewer for the purpose of just use two or four for the reason, just use because. Okay, I'm going to jump quickly to the next one. Use visuals as much as possible. Sometimes when we're trying to explain a lot of content to our you know, end users in big paragraph, it becomes difficult. If you can create a information architecture diagram, or if you can uh, create an architect architecture diagram, if you can take screenshots, if you can uh, do, you know, split that content in tables, graph charts, uh, that is going to help the customers by looking at just one screen. If you are trying to explain the data flow of uh, in a, or in a software that this is the data comes, this is where it gets processed, this is what happens at the back end and this is where it gets stored if you can use a tool to create a diagram architecture the person can quickly look at that and he'll be able to understand what's happening instead of you explaining that those things in you know paragraphs and pages not required nowadays we have these animations and videos thanks to a fast internet speed people are uh, you know, people can access internet anywhere, everywhere. So they would love to, you know, watch the video of a certain simulation, animation, and all these things, so they can watch and perform certain tasks. That is also very in thing nowadays. So use visuals. Um, okay, writing for international audience. I think I've already covered that. Write short sentences because your content might be going in the hands of people where the English is not their first language you know, Russia, Ukraine, Spain, Japan, Korea, China. Uh, English is not the first language. So write simple sentences, simpler words. Don't use unnecessary words. Avoid usage of slang and colloquialism. Now this is like some words, some phrases that are popular in my country. But if I just use that for somebody else in another country that other person might not understand. Uh, I. I been to US, I was traveling and they used to talk in 
this kind of uh, language or sometimes which I didn't understand. So I had to ask them, what did that mean? So they used to understand, oh, sorry, we forgot that you're not from the US. So you'll not understand this particular uh, you know, phrase. So they used to translate that. And, and that was also English, but it had, it, 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 it had some other meaning. So they had to explain, OK, this is what it means. OK, thank you. Uh, uh, use consistent terminology. Uh, if, if you are using click, 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 use click everywhere. Don't say uh, somewhere you're going to say, you know, press somewhere you'll say hit this button or press this button. Somewhere you're saying click this button. No, not required. If, you have, if it has to be clicked, just use click. Don't use negative constructions. Uh, sign up for the con sign up to access the content. This is one way to write one sentence. And the negative way to write the sentence is you cannot access the content without signing up. Which sounds which sounds better, the positive one, right? So use positive uh, formation of sentences. Don't use uh, negative ways to write sentence. If you are using quotation marks, just be consistent in quotation marks as well. Somewhere I've seen that there's a button name called submit. Click the submit button. That submit has somewhere it had just one one quote. Somewhere it had double quote. Somewhere it was bold. Somewhere it was bold and underlined. So people get confused why this one submit button is written differently at, diff on, at, at different places. So make sure you are, you are consistent in that as well. I think my presentation is already, we are 45 minutes through this presentation, and there's a lot to uh, cover. So if I'm not able to cover today uh, uh, something, then maybe I can reschedule. Uh, you can drop me an email. Uh, and uh, or maybe you can just send me a message on my social and i'll also schedule another one maybe for two hours where i cover everything okay so avoid use avoid avoid using these words in technical writing and when we talk we start our sentence with where are you from basically i'm from delhi obviously actually we start our sentences and then we also in our in our content i've seen uh, we write please you know, please press this button. I mean, why do you why do you have to ask that person to please? You don't have to request. It's like he needs to do that. <laughs> you can't simply plead him to do that. So all these things have to be avoided. Contractions don't, won't, will, shall avoid all these things. Instead of saying don't use, do not. Instead of won't, you say will not. Avoid contractions. Avoid negative words, negative formation of sentences, which I discussed. And this is how you. Uh, the right steps if you are going to explain a uh, uh, procedure uh, this is the one example okay this is the bulleted list that okay number one navigate to url number two de determine if you are doing this and then under that there are two further sub steps which then you this talks about if your system shows 64 bit in either of these this is the result of that and third point so this is how you write steps Okay, so this is uh, we have covered all about how we write word sentences, paragraph. Let's quickly talk about the full dev document development cycle. See anything that you do in real life. Let's say uh, you are making a software, you you are uh, constructing a building, or you are doing anything. It starts with a planning, right? Same way it happens with document as well. Before you start writing a document, you have, you start gathering the requirements you start understanding uh, everything that the product does make notes you know attend demos with you know uh, the meetings trainings with your uh, subject matter experts and get a good feel good understanding of the product and then you start designing your document how do you design your document design means that first you create a content outline right instead of simply jumping into content you start okay there's the first chapter i'm going to write in this first chapter i'm going to have these subsections and these subsections will have further subsections then you talk about okay chapter two will have this thing and these subsections so before you actually start writing the content <clears throat> uh, create that structure and once that structure is finalized, now this might take a while. You create a structure, go back to your engineers and tell them that this is what I've written. Can you review this and let me know if I'm making some mistakes, if I need to add some things, if I need to delete something. The, the, the engineers who are your subject matter expert, they might give you some reviews. They might take a couple of back and forth before you have a good 
uh, structure, which may not be accurate again. While writing also, you might still make some additions and deletions to your structure, but at least it's a still a good starting point. So once you have that, start developing the content. Now you have this structure in mind, start writing. Okay, this section will talk about this thing. Okay, let me write about this. What you write, get information from. Uh, you might have already got some information by attending all these demos, meetings, and reading some design documents. Start writing. So that is a development phase. And then you give it for review. Review to who? Review to, you give it to review to your engineers. And it you need not wait for the full document to complete before you hand over your document uh, for engineering review. You can probably have, let's say, okay, you've written one chapter or maybe of some few sections. Give it back to them that this is what I've written. Can you review and give me the feedback? So it might take, again, uh, some iterations back and forth. So after you you know you get the review commands you incorporate the, those review review commands you finalize the content uh, the the document make it clean and then you publish it publish means uh, a document is going in an online mode or it's going in a pdf mode or there might be different delivery mechanisms so follow those delivery mechanisms and that is where you publish your content every company has a different delivery mechanism so there is no one particular uh, thing that the companies follow. It keeps changing from company to company. OK, so there are different types of documents. Uh, I would recommend uh, you make a note of this list and uh, Google some sample documents to get an understanding of how a getting started guide should look like, what an installation guide is, what an administrator's guide is. See, I'm going to quickly cover all these things in this one hour because that is um, at a high level, I can cover, but all these things, if I am supposed to teach you, it would at least take me, let's say, 50 hours of full fledged training uh, to complete all these things. But in this, because of time constraint with one hour, I can just tell you at a high level, and then you're free to uh, make notes from this. And every all the resources are, are available on the internet. You can just search and, you know, from your time, ten, uh, spend some time, and then you'll be able to become a really good technical writer. A training might not be required, but uh, if there are, if you really require a training, then there are a lot of training institutes that provide technical writing training as well. OK, so there are different types of output types, again, uh, based on the tools that the company is using. Uh, every tool does a different task. Every tool is a different way to present, you know, document the content, and then these tools generate different types of outputs. It can be a print mode. That means a PDF can be generated from that, or the content can be in form of a help that directly goes and sits on the internet. You might have seen that a company has docs on, in, on their website. On the left-hand side, you have a tree structure. You click on that. On the right-hand side of the screen, you get to see the content related to that one particular heading. Nowadays, we have. Uh, Handle devices, mobiles as well. So content is uh, designed in such a way that this is readable on your mobile devices as well. So people will click on, uh, on sorry, tap. That is what you do on your mobile. So people will tap on a uh, link and then the content will get displayed, which will be rendered neatly on this little six inch screen. So there are different tools that different companies use. So you can. I'm going to talk about different tools in my next slide. So MS Word, pretty common nowadays. We have this Google Docs as well. People are writing content in Google Docs as well. Adobe Frame Maker is a tool that is a very good tool to create documents in a uh, you know structured structured way, linear documents that are created and uh, generate. It can generate outputs in different forms. Uh, let's say PDF as well, help as well. Then RoboHelp is again from Adobe company as well. Then there is Xmetal, then there is Authority, there is Madcap, Flare, then there is Epic Editor. So these are the tools uh, that are available in the market. Now, if companies want to create e-learning, uh, they can use tools for e-learning. Maybe you can also Google different e-learning tools. So Captivate is one. Uh, we have tools that we use for graphic editing. Snagit is for creating screenshots, Visio is for uh, creating diagrams, uh, Photoshop Illustrator, you know, this is for giving touch ups and doing a lot of things with photographs, images that you can do. Okay, so guys, uh, I think 
uh, we are running out of time here uh, already i think i have only five minutes left so what is documentation plan as i told you to start a project you, you, you start with a start so documentation planning is the first thing you first identify what are the things that you are going to do in a document or a product might have multiple documents let's say it's a complex product it might have um, a requirement for an installation guide a getting started guide a user guide an admin guide a developer's guide an api document so just identify, identify what are the different documents that you're going to write what who are the stakeholders who are, who are the people who are going to provide information how you're going to deliver the document the timeline the schedules the structure all these things go into documentation plan again uh, you know google and google for documentation plan and you will get some good sample documentation plans on the internet you can download and see uh, what a documentation plan looks like next is creating schedule based on uh, your experience or based on sometimes it's a manager if you are a fresher or new technical writers the, your documentation manager is going to give you a schedule that stick to these dates and get something done or sometimes when you get experienced uh, you can create your own schedules by looking at okay this is your speed this is the complexity of the uh, information that you're writing uh, and this is the amount of work that needs to be done and then I assume that by this date, you will be able to do this thing. So it's like these are number games, little mathematics that we learned in, uh, you know, um, in our middle school. So just think about those things and that is how you create schedules. Performance or, uh, you know, perform audience analysis before you start writing your content. Also identify who is your end user, who is who's the person going to read your content. So write in that level of language. If the person is, uh, you know, highly technical person, you can't simply talk about the basics. What is internet? What is MS Word? No, that is not required. You start with their level. If the person is new, let's say, uh, I am working with a company that makes some variables for older people. And uh, so I have to write very simple English. I can't give them very technical information in that case. So I have to understand, okay, these older people who all are above 60 years of age, um, I have to write content in simple languages. Not there. The eyesight may be weak as well. I need to write bold contents, bold font, bigger fonts, bigger pictures, so that they can understand. So just do a, a audience analysis. Identify who your audience are. Then you start writing the content for them. Then you do a task analysis. I think I already covered. Uh, whatever the tasks are uh, that the user is going to perform to you know, in, in that particular application, hardware, software, and just create them, just write the task in, in an order, and then that is what you document in your, uh, you add in your documents. Based on that, you will be creating your uh, content out by. Okay, I think I already covered that. Uh, content development, I already covered that after. So this, this comes after you have created your uh, content outline. Okay, review your content. Uh, of course, you can review it yourself and ask your peer to review somebody else. If that, you know, there's always good to have another person review your content because sometimes the, the mistake may be in front of your eyes. But if somebody uh, reads your content, he can quickly identify oh, this is a mistake you're making. And then you have the technical reviews. I think we already have discussed this that give your documents to your uh, engineers and they're going to review it for you. They'll give you technical feedback, technical inputs that you can incorporate in your content. And editorial review, if you have editors in your team, they can edit the content, then that is going to help you as well. Document conver conversion is the last step before you publish the documents. Uh, there is, a, it may be in form of a online help or a PDF or in some other way. So that is the every tool, let's say in MS Word also, if you're using MS Word, it has save as options. If you click save as, then you will get so many different options. You save as PDF, you save as HTML. So those are like very basic way of explaining that uh, the document can be converted into a deliverable, which you can send it across to the customers in a PDF attachment, or they can download it from the internet. And then content publishing. Nowadays, CDs are kind of gone. So we have online, uh, mobile devices in print, which is the PDF. This is how we deliver the content. 
then we have the content management system where we store the content we have to decide and uh, maybe we can just look for content management system i think we are at the end of the time uh, maybe is going to end in a couple of minutes so uh, what we can do is if you're interested i can uh, you know, continue this in my upcoming. I can schedule other one which will be a longer duration, maybe a couple of hours, which where I cover all these different things. So I think uh, this is a very uh, basic fundamentals which I wanted to cover to so, uh, get your feel. Hope this was helpful, and uh, uh, just follow me on my social media handle. Post um, any questions that you may have there, and. Uh, I'll be able to help you, I'm sure. I'm going to respond to all of your questions. And uh, I think that's all for today. Uh, we are already running out of time. And uh, there's a lot to cover. Maybe I can plan other session, uh, maybe soon. Thank you, guys. And uh, do uh, send me uh, likes, follows, and I'll reply to your questions. Thank you, guys. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.